Welcome uh, to BizHack Live, the digital marketers graduation party. I'm so excited to be picking back up on our BizHack Live series after a few weeks away. Um, and uh, thrilled to begin with uh, such a fantastic group. Um, I wanted to quickly introduce myself and then uh, our amazing uh, cohort 14, the Mad Hatters, uh, Hackers. Um, my name is Dan Gretsch. I'm the founder and CEO of BizHack Academy, former journalist for NPR, PBS, and the Miami Herald, um, who has transitioned into digital marketing, uh, first for a large energy company and then for several software startups before starting uh, BizHack, which is dedicated to helping small businesses uh, find their online mojo, again, learn how to generate leads and sales online. Um, I wanted to introduce a group that we're going to be calling from now on the Mad Hackers. Uh, the Mad Hackers are participants in the five-week uh, accelerated program in digital marketing and lead generation, and so thrilled uh, that uh, we can be celebrating them today. Um, we're going to be doing a number of case studies from the Mad Hackers, talking about the amazing results that they got. We're going to have a graduation celebration for all of those amazing Mad Hackers, a class photo. Uh, we're going to give out what's called the Biz Hacker Award, which is a participant voted top uh, participants in their cohort. Uh, we're going to raffle thank you gifts throughout, and we're going to have a special musical surprise at the end of the day. So uh, stay tuned. It's going to be a fabulous uh, ceremony today. I want to start with our first thank you gifts raffle. Um, and Lilia Posos uh, with BizHack Academy is going to announce the winners. First, we have four free tickets to Eddie Edwards' Grace Jamaican Jerk Festival. Uh, and our winners are? If I am mute myself. So we have four winners. Uh, Sharon Holm, Sandra Brevet, Alexandro Bolaños, and Ralph Jimenez. Congratulations. Congratulations to our winners. Yay. Um, and, you know, guys, feel free to, um, if you want to uh, use the emoticons below or um, uh, put your thumbs up, uh, we'd love to um, uh, have this be as interactive as possible. Um, so congratulations to our winners. We'll have some more. Uh, these are thank you gifts, by the way, from the participants in the course. Uh, and this is a tradition that we give. We know that uh, we can't do this without you, our friends and our family in this community. And so we're here to um, not only celebrate our accomplishment, but also thank the people who made it possible. So thank you for that. So I wanted to talk a second about BizHack and how BizHack got to this uh, fabulous place where we're graduating our 14th cohort of uh, amazing business owners. Um, BizHack has been the beneficiary of a number of different uh, accelerator and business support programs funded by Goldman Sachs, uh, the Knight Foundation. We were named a top startup by the Miami Herald, and uh, we're right now being accelerated by EO. Um, and we're very thankful for the help that we have been given as a small business to help us grow, uh, just like we help other small businesses grow. We partnered with the top educational institutions uh, in South Florida and some of the most important educators uh, worldwide, uh, Miami Dade College, Broward College, and FIU. And we have partnered with a number of business support organizations across South Florida and the country, uh, specifically to help um, minority and women-owned businesses uh, push forward in their efforts. Uh, to that end, uh, BizHack this year launched a scholarship program for women and entrepreneurs of color. Um, if anyone you know is interested uh, in applying for that, I would strongly recommend that they apply at try.bizhack.com slash scholarship. This is really a huge part of our commitment to helping um, make a, a more equitable a playing field for business owners of all stripes. And so uh, we're very, very proud um, to be a minority serving organization and a women serving organization. And as you'll see from the graduates, uh, we are really fulfilling that mission. We have trained now 550 businesses in the Digital Marketers Edge program. Um, many of the businesses that you're going to see today are small micro enterprises, but we have had folks from Fortune 50 and Fortune 100 companies. 
uh, Ryder, NBC Universal, Royal Caribbean, and many of our small businesses have become nationally renowned. For instance, uh, Rafael Savino, the owner of Ascend Dance Studios, a dance studio in Doral, uh, has been featured in national ad campaigns by both Google and Facebook. BizHack in 2019 trained 112 small businesses and they on average earned $29 in revenue for every $1 that they spent in the course. Um, their total ad spend was 17,000 and their incremental revenue was 500,000, an ROI of 29 to one. And we're so proud uh, of this, um, the, the way that we're helping small businesses and helping marketing and, and, and communications professionals turn a corner in their career. Um, these results are life-changing results and they give, uh, honestly, these are just the results in the first five weeks and it's really what comes after that uh, that's so important. And we're gonna actually hear from two of our fabulous alumni today, folks who went through the program in the past to talk a little bit about what next looks like for them and how they've been able to take what they've learned and use it to continue to build their careers and their businesses. So now I wanna welcome, welcome uh, the, the stars of the day, the Digital Marketers Edge uh, Cohort 14. These are the Mad Hackers. Woo -hoo! Yeah. These are the amazing businesses. Yay! These are the amazing businesses that are part of the Mad Hackers group. Um, and I couldn't be more proud uh, to have worked with you guys and uh, sweat with you guys. I know this is hard work uh, and we're really here to, to celebrate uh, the amazing work that you have all done. So I wanted to um, go right into the real life campaigns and we're gonna have a series of presentations now uh, of some of our uh, top uh, performers in the semester, uh, folks who were elected by the instructors as well as their peers uh, to best represent the uh, amazing results and the variety of um, results that we've seen from this course. Um, the structure is gonna be like this. I'm gonna do a brief introduction. Um, at that point then, um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I'm gonna invite the presenter to share their screen, do their presentation. Uh, I'd ask that you keep it to five minutes uh, and then we're gonna have the coaches and, the, and Alex, the lead instructor uh, comment on your presentation and your campaign and what it was like to work with you. So uh, without further ado, we're gonna get started. Um, our first presenter uh, is Steve Jaramillo. Um, so uh, Steve, if you could get ready your presentation and, and, and to share your screen, uh, I'm gonna do a quick intro now. Steve Jaramillo is someone who uh, brings an incredible marketing background to his entrepreneurial adventure running Custom Cleaners, which is an organic dry cleaning service. And what I found so impressive about Steve uh, is the almost clinical way in which he's been testing assumptions and building out knowledge about what his audience responds to and the best way to market his service online. What you're gonna really see in this presentation is an analytical mind at its best. And so without further ado, I wanna welcome Steve Jaramillo of Custom Cleaners. He's also gonna talk about a project that he worked on with other fellow retailers in his shopping center in Hopewell, New Jersey, who we had been working with over the course of several uh, weeks to try to build a group campaign that could be supportive of each of the small businesses individually. To you, on to you, Steve. Oh, thank you, Dan. Uh, let me just set up and I'm gonna share my screen with you guys. All righty. So as Dan mentioned, uh, my name is Steve Haramio. I am the owner of Custom Cleaners in Pennington, New Jersey. Um, I have a lot of material to cover in five minutes or so, so I'm going to try to move quickly. But as Dan mentioned, um, I started my career in field sales, um, but realized probably about six months in that I wanted to be an entrepreneur, that I didn't want to have a boss. So I went back to business school, uh, studied brand and product management, so that way I can learn to manage a business when I was time while I was preparing for entrepreneurship. Worked for Bayer as a brand manager. Um, lot, worked on a couple of entrepreneurial ventures while I was there. Uh, one of them didn't launch, the other one failed very quickly, but learned a lot. 
and then took a detour selling digital marketing while I was uh, trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Um, I took over custom cleaners about a year ago, figured that entrepreneurship through acquisition was the best approach. Um, if you guys ever saw Forrest Gump, this is what I thought it would be like, just breaking in the money. Um, but obviously COVID hit, and so this is what it's actually been like. Um, so yeah, when I, when I first took over custom cleaners, this is a look like numbers scrubbed of what my re revenue um, on a monthly basis looked like. And so and just a heads up, Steve, I don't think we're seeing your screen, just so you know. Sorry. There we go. Sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, okay. Let me just, now I've got to get this out of the way so I can jump back to here. Come on. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. So, yeah, so here's a look at my monthly revenue numbers scrub um, month over month as I first took over the business. Um, and as I mentioned, I took over the business about a year ago, so I was brand new. I was learning dry cleaning and had a really strong operational focus. Um, marketing kind of took a back seat because I was just hanging on. I was trying to really master dry cleaning and keep the customers that I had. But then COVID-19 hit and the lockdown started and my revenue really fell through the floor. And so I had a lot more time because I wasn't operating regularly um, to think about marketing and, and how to drive more people into my business uh, specifically because I think that there's going to be a lot of disruption because of COVID in the dry cleaning category. So as mentioned, um, some real life campaigns. This is a Facebook campaign that I launched right before the lockdown started. Um, I just launched a pickup and delivery service and I was basically geo-targeting around the store. Um, I did a, an adult audience, 29 to 59, thinking that that would be roughly the dry cleaning demographic. Uh, spent about $85. Um, you'll see that my cost, my, my CPM, so cost per thousand people reached was about five to $6 range, give or take. I had 101 clicks, so my cost per click was 84 cents. And I was you know, fairly satisfied with those results. I didn't see any conversions from that, but got a lot of impressions. And it's about what I expected for a CPM and for, from a, a cost per click perspective. So after taking this, this course, I launched a, uh, a, an A-B test of LinkedIn and Facebook. You'll see that I used the same image. I, I used the same messaging um, throughout. I tried to make it pretty much as close as possible. I even tried to mimic the same demographic as closely as I could. Um, but you'll see that for LinkedIn relative to Facebook, the, the CPM went up to you know, almost $36. My click-through rate was really poor. My cost per click was really high. So I wasn't reaching as many people. It was really expensive. And so I, I shut off the campaign pretty quickly. Facebook, on the other hand, um, so Facebook with this targeting, like I did better than LinkedIn, but my CPM was still higher than what I'd seen previously when I had a, a broader target um, and I was using the same, um, same image. So I wanted to test the, uh, the, the, the imagery of the ad. And so on the left-hand side, you'll see the ad that I ran um, with the static image. And on the right-hand side, I used a carousel ad, but kept the, the targeting the same, kept the messaging the same. But I noticed that you know, I, I had a very comparable CPM. Um, and so I didn't really see a material increase in the results there or improvement. So then going against a different demographic, this is more of a female demographic, um, really into fashion, into clothes, which really care about their, uh, the care of their clothes. I used a different image, um, hoping that that would, you know, be more appealing. Uh, and then also like just, just basically did an A-B test of vari like uh, of messaging. So one leaned into leaving your clothes cleaner, fresher, and softer. The other one leaned into using organic uh, soap and never using harsh chemicals. But my CPM was, was even higher. <laughs> my cost per click was really, really high. So those campaigns, you know, didn't, didn't work out very well for me. Finally, I used a, uh, a video ad, um, and this one I opened up the, the, the targeting. So this, I went back to the broader targeting, just geofence. I didn't use so many interest-based variables to, to segment my audience. Um, my CPM was much lower. My cost per click was back in range of what, I was, what I'd seen when I used the, uh, the static image. And so um, happier with this result. So some ahas that I have are that I haven't yet cracked the code on Facebook as a lower funnel tactic. Um, I haven't seen any conversions come through yet, but I'm you know, committed to continuing to try um, until I find out what works for my business. Um, 
targeting by interest on Facebook drives up my CPMs. For me, I think it's because I'm a brick and mortar and I'm, I have a very limited geography and there's not that many people in driving distance from my store. I think the broader targeting works better for me. It drives down my CPMs, gives me it's more, more impressions, it's just more efficient. Um, and COVID has fundamentally disrupted and changed the, the dry cleaning industry. So I'm trying to position myself today for where I think the, uh, the industry is going to go. So with that, I'm going to jump into the Galcor campaign, which was a, a, like how Galcor, which is our, our landlord, got us into BizHack and some of the things that we've done. So uh, Galcor is a uh, real estate landlord um, in like this central New Jersey, southeastern Pennsylvania region. Um, and with COVID-19, they, they gave us all an opportunity to help get on our feet faster and help us try to recover uh, from COVID-19 by offering this opportunity. So as mentioned, uh, COVID-19 had an impact on, on not just my business, but a lot of the, the tenants in the shopping plaza as well. Um, Galcor approached us with the, the opportunity to you know, partner with BizHack to learn some things that could help drive our business. And then through that, we uncovered an opportunity for us to all collaborate and try to cross promote each other. Now that we got to know each other, now that we're, we, have, we all have a much stronger focus on marketing. And so that's how Hope Well Strong kind of came about. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in some of the upcoming slides. Um, but before I get into Hope Well Strong per se, just want to call out some of the, the outcomes of the Galcor Business Hack, or Biz Hack partnership. So Victory Taekwondo, which is one of my neighbors, um, they experienced a decline in attendance. So they're a, a Taekwondo studio, primarily for, for, for children, but also, you know, parents bring their kids and are able to enroll their kids in, in Taekwondo. But their attendance went to zero because it's really hard to convince parents that it's safe to have your kids do classes in an indoor setting um, in the environment of COVID. And so Master Kim pivoted. Um, he put out a video explaining some of the safety measures that they're taking. He started holding outdoor classes in the morning, um, and he started to see some attendance, which is an improvement from where he was be being that COVID-19 essentially closed down his business. Piccolo Trotteria is also my neighbor, um, and they partnered with a web design agency to try to drive more reviews, that being of paramount importance for a restaurant. Um, and the Nail Shop has been updating their, their digital presence as well, um, updating their, their website and looking to create appointment apparatuses for people to book appointments online. Um, Hope Well Strong is a, a collaboration amongst all of us. Um, it started out with a coupon uh, campaign where we're giving out coupons for all of our other neighbors as well, as well as for our, our own businesses and trying to drive some new business that way. So here's what the flyer looks like on the left. Um, you'll see that each of us are distributing them to our customers. So me as a dry cleaner, I've been stapling them to all of our, our uh, orders. And then we've also been talking about it online to our respective following. So for custom cleaners that have gotten four redemptions so far, uh, Piccolo's gotten five. Um, we haven't seen any yet from some of the other ones. But I've, we've also been posting about it and my organic Facebook post drove a lot of um, engagement more so than any of the other organic posts that I've done. Hope Well Strong, uh, this is kind of like a mission statement for it. So it's a community that's stronger than COVID-19. Um, small businesses united as one, business owners banding together to support one another um, to overcome the crisis. Um, we're providing coupons as a thank you to new customers, um, really in the hopes that the community and small businesses uh, work together to overcome the crisis. So what's next is doing a, a, a social video ad, just explaining more so like what Hope Well Strong is. So the coupons have started and kind of been a teaser, but really want to blow out what Hope Well Strong is and why the community should care about supporting small businesses and how we thank them for, the, for their support. And then long term, when COVID-19 is, is past us and hopefully in the rear view mirror, we want to do a street festival to really celebrate and to celebrate the community getting past it and overcoming it to also expose us to new customers, drive some trial and, and generate some positive attribution from the community. So with that, I wanna stop sharing my screen, just turn things over to you guys, but thank you for, uh, for learning about custom cleaners and thank you for listening to the uh, Hope Well Strong campaign. And thank you to Galcor for, uh, for sponsoring us and for enrolling us in this course. Yay! I'd love to turn it over to Yoel Gutierrez. Yay, good job.
Yuel is the coach who's been working hand in hand with Steve and the Gelcor gang um, and would love to have you reflect on what it's been like to work with Steve and the other uh, retailers in Hopewell Crossings, New Jersey. Wow. Hey guys, first of all, uh, uh, congratulations to everybody to, uh, uh, for making it this far. Um, I thank you, Dan, for um, start, uh, starting this for us. We also, so I, I wanted to first thank Gelcor because they, you know, they, as, as, a, as a landlord, I, I haven't seen any, any landlord be as involved with their uh, uh, small business owners as they, as they have been. So that's been great. Um, also, Steve, great analytical person, business owner. Um, that was a great presentation. It's, it's been great working with all the business owners, being a small business owner myself, and seeing the growth that we've been able to accomplish together uh, ever since this pandemic started. So uh, congratulations, um, Steve, you're gonna do great. And all the other uh, Gelcor uh, businesses will do great as well. Um, I wanted to um, invite uh, Ross Cohen, if you're open to it, Ross. Uh, Ross is um, one of the owners of Gelcor. Um, uh, Ross is also um, the, 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 the son of my mother's cousin uh, and, and a dear friend from for many years. And Ross uh, kind of was on this journey with us every step of the way, working with these businesses. Um, I want to kind of echo what um, Yoel said, it's a real visionary landlord that supports his uh, tenants with the tools to grow and survive during COVID-19. I've heard just so many horror stories uh, about uh, landlords uh, treating their ten tenants despicably during this crisis. And uh, this is just uh, such a, a refreshing uh, example of the possibilities that emerge when small businesses come together with the support uh, of their uh, their community. Uh, Ross, uh, are you able to take yourself off mute and, and it, it just sort of reflect on what it's been like for you to work with everybody? Yeah, sure. Can, can you hear me right now? Just... Yep. Okay, all right, making sure. I'm having a thunderstorm right now, so uh, connection's a little fuzzy, but um, thanks um, for the introduction, Dan. Um, how we kind of, how Galcor approached this, you know, COVID with all of our tenants is, and I said this from the start is that, you know, a landlord's success, our philosophy as a landlord, a landlord's success is derived from its tenant success. Our property is only as successful as the businesses that occupy it and then operate out of it. So it behooves us to work with our tenants, both financially and from a marketing perspective to make them as successful as possible. When COVID struck, we understood um, that being a retail landlord in um, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, that a number of tenants um, would be having issues, obviously. And especially at Hopewell, where Steve is a tenant, where a number of um, the uh, tenants who joined us in our partnership with BizHack, um, they were tenants at our shopping center in Pennington, New Jersey. Um, and they were primarily uh, independent owners. So we knew that ownership like that or tenants like that were gonna have uh, issues. And so, we decided from that point, from when things began to, uh, you know, take a turn for the worse and get shut down, that it would be better to work with them. So we reached out to Dan and arranged a, a program by which uh, we would introduce some of them, those who are willing to participate, into you know, um, a online webinar course whereby they could pick up uh, the means by which to digital market. Um, some like Steve and Jamie and and Emily or Emily. Uh, Jamie and Emily are on this, um, were more uh, adept at this kind of thing already, but we also were able to um, loop in those tenants who may not be and hopefully picked up some useful lessons. And from our perspective, from mine and my father's perspective, is if we can get two to three tenants across our portfolio to uh, join our partnership with BizHack and, and learn from it, that that ultimately is successful. If we can save one tenant, then it was it was more than worth it, not just from, you know, our financial standpoint as a landlord, but also just from, uh, you know, being a, a good member of the community and, you know, working together with everyone to, to help everyone get through this. So that was kind of our philosophy and thinking through this entire thing. And, you know, as time goes on, we continue working with those tenants who, you know, find themselves in a position of, you know, struggling to, to get demand, struggling to get customers back. Um, and that's kind of what we're, uh, 
uh, how we've been handling and how we continue to handle it. Perfect, thank you. Um, Alex, you were the lead instructor of this course. Was there anything you wanted to add? Uh, well, congratulations, uh, everybody, for, for a great job. So proud of all of you, and nice to see you all here. Uh, Steve, uh, fantastic presentation, and I really like the way you analyzed each ad. Um, hopefully, now you see that the, um, you know, you can do the A-B split testing just by having different ads within that ad set, and Facebook will show you through its AI what is working best. Um, I think, you know, middle of the funnel, uh, education is important. So teaching people why organic cleaning is better and why your services are better. And then bottom of the funnel really is about retargeting and having a good offer, just like you were offering a coupon through Galcor and, and the Hopewell camp campaign, uh, you know, offering it on Facebook and wherever you're advertising. I would say a couple of other uh, quick hits for you are to improve your Google My Business by adding your website to it and also uh, improving your ratings on Yelp. Those things still do count. Yelp sucks. We all know that. However, it still does count. People look at it and get uh, get everyone you know to, to rate you on Yelp to bring that uh, rate, those ratings up. So I think those, those kind of also on your website, you could add more content, which will help you um, rank on Google because right now if you search for custom cleaners it's such a generic name that it's hard to find and pop up on search results so you really have to pay attention to uh, SEO so these are just observations and quick wins for you uh, otherwise you're doing great and uh, wish you uh, all the best luck um, thank you thank you Alex and thank you Steve uh, and a special thanks to Ken and Ross you guys are amazing Look forward to catching up with you soon. Um, all right, I'm going to share my screen now again, and I'm excited to introduce our next amazing presenter. Melissa France is an event marketer. She is someone who has worked with uh, bringing to events uh, vendors and artisans and with COVID-19, her business has been fundamentally and profoundly disrupted. Uh, but unlike many event marketers who basically just packed it up, uh, Melissa has shown extraordinary resilience and incredible creativity in her bringing together a campaign that connects some of the best chefs in South Florida with uh, folks who are now suddenly finding themselves needing to cook at home. It's with incredible pleasure that I welcome Melissa France of Event Village, a two-sided marketplace to connect events and artisans. Melissa. <laughs> Thank you. So let's see if I'm, let me know if, are, are you seeing my screen? Yes, Melissa. Okay, good. All right. So thank you very much, Dan. I appreciate that. Um, as Dan said, um, I'm the founder and CEO of Event Village. We are an e-commerce uh, platform and live virtual marketplace. Um, and our focus is hyper-focused on local artisans, designers, curators, chefs, and bakers. Um, I've been in the event industry most of my life. I started out working for nonprofits, producing walks, uh, bike tours, galas, and I even produced beer festivals, and I have a typo there. Sorry about that. Um, but most recently, I was started producing artisan markets, and I fell in love with the artisan community. I fell in love with their passion and their creativity. Um, so I had originally set out to create a different uh, platform. What I wanted to do was connect vendors with event organizers. I saw a lot of opportunity there where people were just, uh, it was so complicated for them to find each other. And um, I wanted to take a low tech industry and try and elevate it a little bit. So originally I started trying to do that, but then the pandemic hit and I had to pivot. I knew I wanted to create something for artisans. I knew that that was where my expertise was and that was where my heart lied. 
So uh, literally one day, one morning in March, I woke up and I knew what it was that I wanted to do. I needed to recreate not just an e-commerce platform where I could really focus on promoting local vendors uh, and artisans, uh, but actually tell their story so people could gain context from what they're doing. But I didn't want just another e-commerce platform. I wanted to create, recreate that live experience when you go to a market, when you go to an outdoor market. So that's what I started to work on. Um, for my project, I decided I wanted to pull out one of those target markets and I chose chefs because I love food and I'm a foodie and um, they had been the hardest hit uh, restaurants and hospitality have been the hardest hit during this whole pandemic. Um, people are cooking at home more than ever before um, and when they do get home delivery it's usually either cold or soggy, and it's really not quite the way you remember it was supposed to be. Uh, of, I think restaurant owners have a hard time marketing their restaurants. They get lost in sort of like the sea of other restaurants. Um, people are getting bored with their own cooking. And um, I started to look at statistics and I did some research and I saw that food, uh, uh, meal delivery services were going through the roof in terms of sales. Uh, and But then I realized that people don't necessarily want to get locked into one food delivery service. So I thought, wouldn't it be fun if we could create something that supports our own local restaurants and chefs through delivering meal kits? I didn't want to be another Uber Eats or another Grubhub. I wanted to create something where people could actually bring the kids home from their favorite chefs, cook at home, be able to post videos where they could see what the chefs were cooking and learn how to do it. So it would be sort of like a fun experience of learning and also creating some great meals for your family. Um, it also helped them to diversify what they were cooking at home. They'd still be getting the same quality ingredients that restaurants used um, and also supporting local vendors, farmers, all the fresh food that comes in the kit. And we also have a partnership with a company called Lean Orb. They produce biodegradable and compostable food containers and utensils for the food industry because being um, sustainable and eco-friendly is something that's very, very important to us uh, in our mission for Event Village. So um, I created uh, a, a, an ad. Uh, first I did a, uh, a video views ad and I got really great results. Um, but then I produced this video where I, uh, produ I produced it for leads and I'll play it for you. Oops. So that was the ad that went out. And um, their offer was a report on the benefits of offering food kits and then Event Village's sales and marketing program. So they watched the video, they were able to download a report, I collected their email addresses, then they, re they received the report that had our contact information, we would retarget them with emails, uh, about trying, you know, making appointments with them and talking to them about what the options were for them to be able to be a part of the meal kit program. So I did one ad um, and I used the audience for my video view ads and then I created a lookalike audience to, to broaden the base, to create more, uh, to create a bigger audience. And I launched it, but I stopped the day of the ad after two days because I realized that I attached the wrong uh, lead form. But even though it had the wrong lead form, um, I did get one lead. So from that ad, I got 
706 impressions or views, six clicks to actually look at the uh, lead form and then one actual lead. So I redid the ad and I ran it for four days and I got 3,571 impressions. I had 19 clicks and I got seven leads from that. And they were all chef leads and we're actually working the leads uh, right now. We're in the process of emailing them and um, trying to schedule phone calls with them about creating a meal kit program for them. Um, my aha moments were many because uh, as we were an incredible group and I learned so much from so many, um, I got a lot of information, uh, inspiration from Alex, our instructor, and of course my coach, Cheryl. Um, one of the main things is the ability to razor target your audience through Facebook. That was, that was an amazing thing and enabled me to really target restaurants and chefs. Uh, learning about Lumen video ads was tremendous. Um, it makes you kind of look like a professional. And um, I just, you know, all the ways that I could build audiences was kind of uh, an amazing thing that I learned. Um, let's see, what's next for Event Village? Well, we are currently in the onboarding phase. We're onboarding vendors, uh, which are artisans, curators, designers, all local people in our community that are creating amazing things, as well as restaurants and the chefs. Um, I'll continue targeting our chefs, but I'll also, now that I know how to raise a target, I'll be able to raise a target um, artists, uh, antique and vintage people, fashionistas, foodies, you know, it's, it just broadens my world so much. Um, we're also going to be creating online events. So in other words, the way we're all here streaming, you'll be able to stream with, uh, pop into somebody's booth, stream with the vendor and have conversations and purchase right there on the platform. And, um, and that's it. I want to thank Biz, uh, Biz Hack Academy. It was an amazing experience. My coach, Cheryl Cattell, Alex was an amazing instructor. And one of the extraordinary things about the class is the way everybody really joined together and um, really lifted each other up. And I thought that that was exemplary. And uh, I just want you to know that the design of that t-shirt was actually done by one of our artisans from Event Village. It's um, the name of his company is Pink Bastard and he does, he's an artist, but he also does these stitched t-shirts that are absolutely gorgeous. So I want to thank everybody. All right. Well, Melissa, I get to, I get to um, say a few words and I just want to say, I am so honored to have been on this trip with you. Um, it was just amazing to watch you come when you first came in. It was like, well, we have all these different things that we can target. And, and, and it was just amazing to watch how you, you started to come in and you started to become more razor targeted and razor focused. And that was just such an honor to, to really experience. And I know we started with the vegans and vegetarians, and then mm -hmm. you have the mind of an entrepreneur who saw an opportunity because of COVID and jumped on the food kits. And that was, I mean, that was just, it was just a beauty to behold. And so I want to say thank you for, for bringing me with you on this. It was, it was really a joy and a pleasure to watch the whole path of five weeks. I, I mean, it feels like it would take a big corporation because that's where I come from. It would take a big corporation five years to make the same kind of, you know, learning and transformations that I've seen you do in five weeks. It, w it was really a blessing. Thank you. Thank you. Melissa, I'm so, uh, I'm so proud of you. Um, you know, you have big, big plans. You've done amazing. Uh, we were friends already before. I'm so glad you took this class and uh, that I was able to, to show you some things. Um, I think, um, so I think you pivoted at a very important time and that was an important pivot.
enter your website with the pivot with content specifically uh, aimed at meal kits and chefs you bolster that content you create a page or a series of pages on that you feature what you're doing you send your advertising to that page but you also rank with that on Google search engines I think you know we can see that Blue Apron and these other companies have really uh, boomed with COVID-19 so this is a promising field but you differentiate yourselves from Blue Apron and all those bland choices by having real chefs and you could even do like a show like you're doing right now a weekly show but you can do a show just on meal kits and chefs and you can feature different chefs and you are so well con connected and you're passionate about this I think you could really pull it off and really um, really dominate this space of meal kits uh, in Florida at least thank you yeah that's a great idea we will we have all those plans thanks <laughs> Okay, thank you so much. Sorry, it took me a second to unmute. <laughs> um, all right, so we're going to be going on to our next presenter. It's going to be Victor uh, Amy. I'm going to do a quick introduction. Victor, if you want to get your, uh, yourself ready, uh, I'm going to just share my screen and we'll get started with the next presenter. It's become a tradition now here at BizHack to bring back one of our top alumni to come and talk about what happened since they graduated from the program. We do not at all expect that your results are going to come within the five week period, although we do see uh, often very extraordinary results in that five week period. But marketing is really the long game and it's what you've learned here and then apply that really makes the difference. And I'm so excited to bring back uh, Victor Amy from Verb Company. Victor is uh, a lifelong PR and communications professional who realized that he needed to understand digital marketing and digital tools in order to stay relevant and competitive in his industry. And he has now leveraged these tools to grow his business internationally. It's with incredible pleasure and joy that I welcome PRSA, Fort Lauderdale, former president, Victor Amy from Verb Company. Thank you, Dan, for the kind words and uh, congratulations to all uh, new graduates. Uh, just like you, uh, I graduated from BizHack uh, uh, one year back with cohort 11. And um, uh, more than the story of me, what I want to share is, is a story of one of our customers, uh, a company called Marco Marketing. Uh, who, which is in a business um, of field marketing, where they have 4,000 employees across Latin America, and they help uh, their customers sell their products in retail stores. They have only about 30 customers, but each of those customers has a lifetime value of in the millions of dollars, right? Uh, so that's the, the business uh, we're working on, and, and the story happens in, in Brazil. And Brazil is, um, is a large country of over 200 million people living in cities uh, like Sao Paulo here, which have been uh, heavily impacted by, by the pandemic. They have over 3 million cases and over 100,000 deaths. Uh, which keep growing at a rate of a thousand deaths per day. So when you put together um, a retail plus heavy pandemic impact, you have a you have a a, a crisis, right? And um, a Marco Marketing was willing to try anything to expand expand their customer portfolio. Uh, to mitigate the risk of losing customers uh, in, the, in that situation, right? So they were willing to say, um, you know, here's a uh, thousand dollars per month uh, to invest on a on a Facebook leads campaign, and if you can get us uh, about forty leads after the three months, we'll be happy with that. They were and they are trying everything, right, at the same time. 
so uh, we created this campaign. Just <laughs> um, a very simple, very simple video uh, saying, "Are you ready to open back up the stores?" And uh, and we started experimented experimenting on that, and and uh, the first months uh, we. Uh, we ran the, uh, a, a, a Facebook leads campaign where we split the money in more or less equal parts with a $50 budget per day for each country. And we were running six countries and one of those countries was Brazil, right? So just for Brazil, we got a reach of 10,000 people with a frequency in the range that we were expecting and got 21 leads at a cost of less than seven dollars per lead and and the customer came back and said um these leads uh, are too small for us there's really nothing that we can sell to them but keep going because uh we like the quantity compared to our google ads campaign where we only got 10 leads right so we went okay so let, let's try something different for the second month this was first month was june and second month was uh, July. So we told Facebook uh, to grab these, grab $700 and just invest it in the country uh, to the, the, that got the best results, right? And Facebook did that and blew off the, the list of the campaign with 234 leads just in Brazil uh, out of 75,000 uh, uh, reach. Uh, with the same frequency than before. So it's not that they, they show the ad more times to the same people, but they, they expanded the, the, the reach across the target uh, in a massive way. And we got those leads uh, at only $3, uh, or less than $3 per lead. And the best was, customers said, six of those leads, we really think we can sell to them. So that's, uh, that's very important because it could mean potentially, if they actually do sell to them, a return of $300 for each dollar they invested on Facebook. So it's a, it's a crazy return on investment, right? So for the next round, we said two things. And um, one of those things was, uh, what can we do to get the same kind of result with our own uh, Facebook ads campaign uh, to get leads for our business, right? And the customer said, listen, when you are 25 years in business, you'll get it. <laughs> and, uh, and please, uh, for the next round, make sure to invest in other countries because Mexico also wants this kind of, of result as well, right? Uh, uh, Colombia, Peru, and so on uh, with, with that potential. So uh, there were two aha moments across this that I'd like to, to highlight. And the first one is, Nobody thought that we could get that many leads uh, for this kind of business out of Facebook. Not even Facebook, if you judge it by the nonsense how to uh, steps to unload the leads from the page, right? It's just silly. Uh, if I were Facebook, I would put this information on your face and you wouldn't be able to not look at it. But Facebook, what, what they do is they hide it very well. Uh, and this is one of the things uh, that customers want us to do as their agency. Not even medium-sized companies like this one, or even less large corporations like our other customers, know how to do this kind of campaign on Facebook. They are paying a lot more per lead. Uh, so we are, are starting to, you know, get curiosity from some other customers, uh, like, like I'll tell you in a minute. And, and the other thing, the other aha moment was um, how different uh, Facebook AI thinks uh, compared to us, to the way we think as humans, right? So take this list of the 60 ads we run so far um, in these two months, right? And uh, when you look at this list, what, what we thought was, oh, there's a clear winner. These guys, he, this guy here has 70% of leads. 
So this is the ad that works the best. What the Facebook AI uh, thinks though, when looking at a list like this is, oh, I can get you four leads if you run this silly ad uh, to these people, to these 1600 people. So it's a completely different way to think uh, about a marketing campaign uh, that Facebook AI does, right? It's, it's really uh, strange uh, to see that at work. And um, so next for us is we, we got a new customer uh, who is working on launching a new uh, meditation app for the phone. So you can install this app and, and do your meditations and practice meditation that way. And, um, and the, the reason we got it is because they want social media uh, results, but they don't know how to do it, right? And, and that's how uh, we, we ended up getting that account. So that's the, that's the story of, of Marco Marketing and, and the impact it has had for our business. Um, now, Alex, I know that Victor uh, participated before you were a part, a uh, uh, lead instructor of the program. Did you have anything that you wanted to say just from your perspective, uh, formerly with IBM, and uh, uh, about what you saw in Victor's campaign and what he's taken with it? No, I mean, uh, you know, congratulations on those results. It doesn't surprise me from having run Facebook uh, campaigns for, for the hearing aid industry and, and also other companies. So it is possible, you know, as long as you have the budget to do it, it, you know, people invest 10, 20, 30, $100,000 a month into Facebook campaigns because there's a return on investment. And so your, your results show that uh, it is possible as long as you're making money from Facebook campaigns, why limit your budget? If it's giving you a return on investment, it's better than investing in the stock market or wherever else, right? You're in control. So that's fantastic. And uh, yeah, thank you for bringing up Brazil. It's uh, so heartbreaking. I am half Brazilian myself. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really such a tragedy that what's going on. So, yeah, thank yeah. you. C congratulations, thank you. Victor. It's, it's so exciting to see uh, not only how you've taken uh, what we introduced to you and run with it, but just the level of sophistication that you're bringing to the table. I, I imagine you've probably even shocked yourself a little bit with how far you've come. I was. It's, um, uh, I know there's a good business for us uh, in using social media marketing this way. Uh, and what, I, what we are working on right now is how, how do we make that business real instead of you know, the classic communications consultancy that we do normally, right? And, and I was wondering, you know, you've worked in PRSA. Uh, we have a partnership at BizHack with PRSA to try to bring more PR and communications agency owners uh, into the mix. Uh, is there any message that you would have for folks in the PR and communications field about why uh, this type of training and this skill set is essential? Um, uh, yes, uh, the, the message is... Um, try to look beyond uh, Facebook as a platform and, and all the disinformation problems uh, that the platform have and try to look at it as a communications professional and learn to use business manager, the, the, the advertising and communication framework that the company offers, right? And, and uh, it's hard to do because everybody in communications hates facebook right now <laughs> that's a it's a very strong feeling but um as alex was saying if you have the results why would you not take advantage of that right absolutely uh, you know the idea is that facebook is a tool and it's a tool that we've seen time and time again help small businesses with small budgets and limited staff grow and as long as Facebook continues to do that, I will support its use by small businesses as a tool, uh, even as I publicly uh, uh, comment on their really reprehensible privacy practices and other business practices. Um, you know, Facebook um, has built the better mousetrap. Um, there's no social media platform, LinkedIn, TikTok, Twitter, that gets as consistent results for low budgets uh, as Facebook, and um, they've really done uh, an, an impre impressive job um, building a platform that can allow small businesses and agencies 
to grow. So, uh, Victor, congratulations. It's been Thank amazing uh, to see your growth. Uh, and I'm so grateful to PRSA for all the support it's given. And I look forward to having many PRSA members join our future cohorts. Um, finally, I'm gonna, uh, we're gonna move to our last um, uh, presenter for this part of the presentation. We do have two presenters uh, as part of the Biz Hacker Award, uh, but we're gonna go now uh, into uh, another uh, alumnus and two-time Biz Hacker, Suzanne Jewell. I'm gonna do a quick intro. Uh, and then I'd love um, Alex for you to, to weigh in. It's with special pleasure that I introduce my friend, uh, my guru, and my guide, Suzanne Jewell, uh, for the second time. Suzanne has uh, taken the course twice to help build up her mindful entrepreneur practice. She is an extraordinary contributor and presence uh, in the program and in the class. Uh, I've never seen anyone who's able to express more love, appreciation, and gratitude through a chat uh, than our dear Suzanne. Uh, Suzanne he specializes in helping startups grow mindfully. You know, there's this expression that uh, says that when you're busy, you should meditate. When you are uh, overwhelmed, you must meditate. The idea is that you cannot possibly accomplish your goals as a small business owner or as an entrepreneur without doing so mindfully and using your time and the way that you present yourself to the world in as conscious a way as possible. Uh, Suzanne is the most conscious creator I've ever met and it's with great gratitude and excitement that I present to you Suzanne Jewell, the mindful entrepreneur. Ooh, Dan, I think I should just walk away now because that was too gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm seriously, um, I hope you could see I'm blushing a lot. Thank you. I'm literally so honored to be here. And um, it is this going back to the well a second time that I'm very excited to share why BizHack has mattered to me. And I've done it now at the bookend of 2018 and now here again in 2020. And my focus of what I've been doing is to actually increase and leverage the viewers that I have to tune ins for one place I do teach, which is on Wellness Coach and App, and also to create greater brand awareness. And then as Dan very graciously shared, um, I help startups start up. And I'm even honored to mention that one of my clients here is gonna be one of the biz hackers that won the award later on today. So we'll get into that in a moment. But I'll share with you really quickly my background um, not unlike many of the folks here, I have had and spent time in the corporate global TV world. I had worked with the Cisneros family and launched products in 47 countries around the planet and also did some of the branding for AOL and DirecTV. And prior to that was in the pay-per-view and near video on demand business. So tech marketing in the entertainment space is my background. It turned out that I actually felt called after getting off a plane and living on a plane to learn some mindfulness, and I'll tell you that story very quickly in one of the little next slides, but I'm now certified and trained in heart math, positive psychology, I'm a life coach, and I'm the founder of The Mindful Entrepreneur, the host of Mindful Mornings Miami, which is the show that you see there where I get to interview amazing people, and I'm actually a burnout survivor. I'm one of those people who did too much and I burned out, and that's the reason I found my tush on a cush and mindfulness helped put me back together. My case study today is to help increase tune-in, like I mentioned, grow followers. And my why for doing it was based on having an untapped business opportunity. For example, whenever I have anyone on Wellness Coach, the more butts and seats that I have, the more I get paid. And then I'm also gonna be launching very soon my own Kajabi platform that's going to be training and teaching corporate mindfulness, leadership, resilience, and then also private classes with individuals. My goals were to double the tune in and grow my followers. And drum roll, Friends, here's my Suzanne quick story. Jewel, the Mindful Entrepreneur. I thought I'd take a moment today to actually share with you why mindfulness matters to me so much. And it's because some years ago when I was traveling the globe like a maniac, after I'd left the corporate global TV business, I burned out. I actually ended up in the emergency room with anxiety attacks. And I was so full of cortisol and my circadian rhythms were so upside down. I was sleeping at 
daylight and I was awake at night and it was mindful meditation and emotional regulation and other turns of learning resilience that put me back together again. So that's one of the reasons why I love to live, work, create, and play now in a mindful way. It saved my life. Follow me if you'd like to learn more. So that format I've been using to be able to do the goals I had of increasing awareness, followers, and tune in. And I happened to focus a lot on LinkedIn and I gathered between July and August almost, uh, you can see 600 additional followers. And here's the drum roll news for today. I landed yesterday the Miami Foundation as a new corporate wellness um, client. They'd been seeing the videos that I had been doing and I am now going to twice a month be running their Wednesday wellness programs for their entire leadership team. So yay from that. Um, and then I also booked two other leadership training um, opportunities that are coming up later on. And then I also increased my, increased my wellness class size by 20%. More people were signing up, but not as many people showed up, um, which is up to everyone who signs up. You got to still show up. What were my biggest ahas in being in the course? It's that I have this crazy MacGyver engineering hacker head of like, if I can't figure it out this way, I'll figure it out that way. Video works for me. Um, it turns out to be that I'm a really good storyteller and that I am the brand. I also think it's important for me, having come from the TV business where everything was produced and edited and made to look very flashy, authentic authenticity right now beats flash. And as a Virgo, this last one's really hard for me to live, but done is better than perfect. And that is like, okay, go. It's better to go than it is to stay. And what's next for me in terms of where I'm at is branding the Mindful Jewel with the Kajabi platform, continuing to increase the number of corporate mindfulness masterclass offerings I have. And those are gonna be Mindful Way of Leadership, Being Human 101 and Student Life Skills, continuing some of my um, outreach. And then I also wanna just share very quickly that I could not have gotten here without this really interesting combination of mindfulness, marketing, motivation, and to have the family that I feel held here by. Um, I didn't get here because I'm a yoga teacher. I got here because I was um, burning out and, and burning the candle at both ends. And Dan's organization, two years in a row now doing this, have offered me the opportunity to build a better mousetrap myself about how I can do what I'm doing. So thank you very much. I'm literally so honored. Suzanne, congratulations. Congrats on the new client. That's amazing. And on all the work you've done and on your Mindful Mornings uh, show. Um, I, so as you see, I'm giving advice on like steps towards the future. You can take it or leave it. Uh, but this is what I observe when I look. And so I would suggest you've been sharing your videos on Facebook, which is great. You are comfortable on video. I would suggest that giving YouTube another try. I know you've given it a try. Maybe you became discouraged with it. I would suggest that you keep on uh, persevering with YouTube. It is the second largest search engine in the world and your YouTube contributes to your website's SEO. And in the descriptions of your YouTube, you add links to your website, to your social media, to your Kajabi, whatever it is you're doing, each time you post something, you have a good description and you add links, it all works together and Google likes it when you have stuff on YouTube that links back to what's on the web. And I think that if you gave it another try, um, I think you'll see some results. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. I appreciate that from you so very much. And you're right. Here we go. Fall back down. Get back up again. You know, off to YouTube we go. Yeah, it takes some time, but, you know, be patient. Invite everyone over there and grow it slowly over time. Thank you. And I just want to add, you know, Suzanne, you're such a gifted communicator. Uh, and you have such an important message to share, a message that's never been more important. And so uh, I, I definitely invite you to continue to lean into the thought leadership and the content marketing um, and to kind of look for ways digitally 
to continue to express the beautiful essence of your that you have. So uh, I really look forward to seeing, uh, especially once you've created the Kajabi online course, uh, watching you continue to grow your platform. And thank you for coming with us and joining us for a second round. I'm honored, thrilled, and I couldn't be happier to share this with all of the biz hackers who are here. And I'm here to support you in any way it can. So I'm going to share my screen again. Um, this is the amazing uh, learning journey that each of you have taken uh, over the course of this semester, these five weeks. Uh, the blue line is where you started and the red line is where you are today. Uh, and I'm so proud to see that telling your business story is the area you feel most comfortable. It's the most, it's the core of your marketing. And without that, uh, everything else is uh, difficult or impossible. If you don't know how to tell your story in a way that's differentiated and memorable, it's very hard to have success with digital marketing. I also wanted to invite each of you, if you haven't yet, to please fill out uh, the final feedback survey, um, as well as a digital marketing test, so you can each get your own personalized learning journey report. Trust me, it's a really valuable resource to figure out where you're going to go next with this amazing work you've done over this last uh, five weeks. I wanted to also take a moment and talk about this group of the Mad Hackers and the community that you built. Um, there were five ways in which you just completely um, wowed us as instructors. Uh, the first is we created a WhatsApp group for you guys to share and collaborate. And we saw 10 times the traffic on that WhatsApp group than we've ever seen in the past. Milu Williams, uh, our first Argentinian participant, one of seven international students that were in this cohort, uh, went ahead and renamed the group. And it was in that moment around week two or three when I knew that the Mad Hackers were taking over uh, and that the uh, Mad Hackers, uh, the uh, members of the asylum were taking over the madhouse. Um, we then formed uh, under the direction of instructors Neto and Cheryl, uh, a LinkedIn pod to help us uh, increase our organic traffic on LinkedIn posts and 20 of you uh, more than half the class raised your hand and said we wanted to be a part of it and there's been incredible activity on that LinkedIn pod using what is essentially a biz hack to help get 10 times as much viewership on your LinkedIn posts and I believe that that pod is going to continue into the future and be a lasting resource and asset for all of you. When we took a week off to take a breather, a catch-up week, Veronica and Farouk stood up and helped lead a self-organized peer-to-peer coaching session where you guys, without the instructors, got together and helped one another. And it was just such an extraordinary thing to see the community lifting each other up in such a profound way. And then finally, uh, the depth of the bonds and the community that you built was so strong that you were compelled to order a t-shirt, um, which uh, if you haven't gotten it yet, you'll be getting it in the mail soon. Mad Hackers 2020, we're all mad here, biz hack. Um, and we were able to use a local artisan, uh, part of the event village marketplace, uh, and very grateful to Melissa Franz for organizing that and to all of you guys for designing the logo, ordering the t-shirt and making that all happen. It's really just such a, a miracle uh, when you um, create something like this course, you know, and then you see uh, the participants and the instructors just run with it and make it their own. And I'm so proud uh, of all of you and the work you did this semester. Uh, and frankly, humbled and impressed at the community that you built in the community moving forward that you're going to become a part of the more than 500 businesses that are in our alumni network. We're going to have another round of the raffle now. Um, the first, uh, and Lilia will announce the winner, is one free press release draft and, and distribution by the amazing Georgie Borod. So the winner is Ruthann Smith. Congratulations, Ruthann, one of the first season pass holders for our BizHack Live series. Uh, she, Ruthann actually suggested the idea that we run with. Uh, next is Larico Enterprises is offering 40% off any service that's business planning, management, payroll, and taxes, plus a free 30-minute consultation. That goes to Ross Cohen. Oh, congrats, Ross. 
uh, from Gelcor. And uh, I got to say, Shamila, I I've been so impressed um, by the way you've um, been able to adapt your real life campaign uh, in support of Larico Enterprises and bring such value to the friends and family business. Sometimes people will join the course who are part of large companies and it can be a little difficult sometimes to execute a real life campaign in the context of a large organization. And, um, you know, Shamila, you showed such perseverance and resilience uh, and you've really helped Larico uh, in a really profound way. So thank you for all your amazing work this semester. Um, I wanna take advantage of having everybody on the call for a class photo. So I'd ask everybody, uh, if you haven't already, please turn on your video. Um, and we're gonna do a, a couple straight photos and then a couple crazy ones, as is our tradition. Then can you- So Lilia will lead the photo taking. Can and you uh, your screen so I can see the greed of everybody? Absolutely. Just... And uh, Alex, if you're able to join us, um, I see that you've stepped away from the desk, but it would be great to have you. Um, Anybody else want to turn on their video? I know a number of you haven't. Um, anyone in the class, definitely, please do. Um, Where are you? I don't see you. Steve? Uh, on the other side. Todd Billings, if you can do it. Um, OK. Great. Well, uh, well, we're still missing Melissa. Um, Alexandra. Okay, so oh, make sure you open your eyes, yeah. smile. Okay, I'm gonna count. We have two screens, so hold your, your smile there. So one, two, three. I'm going to the other screen. Hold that smile. One, two, three. Okay, great. Now the crazy one, that was the boring one, so. This is your magic hands moment, so. Hold your pose, one more. So one, two, three, awesome. Thank you guys. Great job everybody, thank you for that. Um, all right, I'll continue uh, sharing my screen now. Thanks for all the kind words and um, we are going to, all right. Um, I'm, I'm so excited now to introduce uh, the amazing teaching team that made this all possible. Um, we have a couple of certificates to, to, to deliver and then uh, for the instructors, and then I'm gonna hand it over to Alex to say a few words and um, introduce the members of the Mad Hackers. So um, Alex de Carvalho, uh, it has been such a pleasure to work with you for the last three courses. Um, I've learned so much about marketing and myself and about life uh, from you. Uh, you're an uh, incredible talent uh, and an incredible soul. And I'm so glad to have you be a part of this. Uh, Alex is formerly with uh, IBM and Constant Contact. He's worked at startups as well as Fortune 50 companies. And he brings to bear the understanding of how to work in a small budget, but to leverage the best practices of some of the top digital marketers in the world. He was backed up by an extraordinary team of marketing coaches, Cheryl Cattell, um, who has a long history, uh, not only as a digital marketer, but as an organizer of the South Florida Integrated Marketing Association, building it up to the um, preeminent digital marketing association in South Florida. Ricardo Barris, an agency owner uh, and specialist in working with small businesses. Uh, he also has a little bit of a musical surprise for us coming up at the end of today. You're gonna be really shocked when you see it. Uh, Neto Almanza, uh, videographer extraordinaire, BizHack alumnus, and uh, incredible creative soul. Um, and Yoel Gutierrez, uh, the owner of Mosquito Joe's Miami, a pest control company that despite COVID is doubled in size this year. Uh, Yoel led the uh, Gelcor group uh, and helped uh, craft and, and bring along uh, both Steve and the Hopewell Strong campaign. Uh, incredible pleasure to have uh, you guys be a part of this and to work with you. Um, I wanted to acknowledge this was Cheryl's uh, first time with us uh, as a marketing coach. Um, you uh, stood out uh, for your intelligence 
uh, your passion uh, and your strong, smart, uh, no-nonsense advice. Uh, I want to award you uh, a certificate as a certified marketing coach uh, of BizHack Academy. Thank you so much. And thank feel free to say a word, feel free to say a word if you'd like. I'd like to thank the Academy. <laughs> no, I, I really it was a it was a joy. It really was a joy to work with um, the team that, that that I got to be a part of was I feel blessed. I feel like I should give you a certificate. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and, and I'm very excited to announce that she's uh, agreed to participate in the coming semester, which starts in September. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but it'll be great to have you back. Thanks. Um, I also wanted to recognize Joel Gutierrez, who worked as a marketing instructor of the Young Core program uh, in a part of uh, the marketing coach team in prior courts. Uh, Yoel, congratulations. You are now a certified lead instructor. Uh, would you like to share a word or two? Sure. Um, thank you so much. Uh, it was a pleasure. Uh, it was the first time I, 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 I led a, a, co a course like this. Um, it is one of my aspirations to, to become a, a business coach. So this was definitely a um, pointing me in, in, in the right direction. So thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you guys. And now it's my distinct pleasure uh, to hand it over uh, to my dear friend, Alex de Carvalho, to uh, give out the certificates and say a few words about these amazing mad hackers. Over to you, Alex. Great. Thank you, uh, Dan. And congrats also on the coaching team. You already know, uh, I've already expressed uh, how, uh, you know, grateful I am to all of you and what a great job you did and what a pleasure it's been collaborating with you. Uh, so I won't repeat that, but thank you again. And I'm so proud of the uh, graduating class, all the effort you put in, all your participation. Uh, you really made it a pleasure for me to, to interact, collaborate uh, with you all. So Alexandra Rivas, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> and Liana, congratulations to you and all your efforts with the videos and figuring it all out. Fantastic. And Milu, thank you for all your effort and all the participation in class. It was wonderful. And Toinette, for the second time, thank you. And congrats on all your business success. It's truly amazing and inspiring. And Kurt, congratulations. Demario, also congratulations. Thank you for being in the class. And Eddie, congratulations. And also, Eddie, I wanted to uh, congratulate you because we have now a Jamaican a woman on the uh, on the ticket, on the democratic ticket. So that must be a great pride to your uh, to your uh, country. So um, congrats on that as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. It has been a pleasure. Uh, Farouk, I think Farouk's not online, but what a pleasure it's been uh, to collaborate with Farouk. Uh, he's been such a great, uh, you know, participant from Britain. So it was always late at night for him when he joined us, and uh, he brought so much to the class. So congrats, Farouk. And Frederica, congratulations to you. Gerard, also congratulations. And Gerard has an interesting story because his uh, Facebook advertising was not um, validated by Facebook, so he had to make changes to it. And the important lesson there, I think, for everyone to bear in mind is on the advertising you do on Facebook, you cannot try to qualify people. So you cannot ask people questions like, do you have hearing loss or are you strapped for cash or did you get divorced and need to move facebook will not allow those kinds of questions because you're trying to qualify people within the ad so facebook only allows you to target according to the targeting criteria but you cannot ask additional uh targeting questions within the ad itself you have to reposition the ad um, and, and you know you will know through the behavior of people 
whether they're qualified. Did they click on your ad? Did they fill out the lead form? So that was a great learning lesson from Gerard, which I think applies to everybody. Uh, Gina, congratulations. Thank you for being a part of the class. And also you um, had such wonderful words. And, uh, you know, I think what's a little bit, uh, we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that, you know, we've all been like in lockdown and quarantined. And so beyond just being like a class to learn, it's also a place to come be social and meet people and create friendships. And I think, Gina, you really brought that out uh, for us and made us uh, aware that this was the additional layer to what's going on here is the, you know, the community feel uh, in the class. So thank you, Gina. Georgie, thank you. You put so much effort into this and I think it showed because I think you got over 20 or 30 leads. Your sales cycle is longer. It might take some months, but hopefully those are qualified leads for you. Even if you just get one, it's gonna, it's gonna give you a return on investment on the whole thing. So congratulations and thank you for all the effort and participation. Jamie uh, from Gelcor also, thank you for being a part of the class. Janelle, uh, congratulations, thank you. Jasmine also, thank you for uh, being a part of the class. Kate Sackman also, uh, Thank you so much. I know you're a friend of Dan's and uh, thank you for taking this class. Also, hopefully uh, it was uh, helpful and useful for you. Christina, thank you so much uh, for, um, for taking the class, for, for completing, uh, I, you know, for sending us the final presentation and, and congratulations. Leslie, congratulations, uh, thank you. Uh, Liana, uh, thank you so much uh, for being a part of the class and uh, congratulations. Is that a repeat? Because I, th I think I saw Liana already before. But anyway, that might be a repeated slide. Uh, Mark Daniel, also for the second time, um, congrats on all the efforts you're making and all the moves you're making. Uh, fantastic. Maxine, uh, congratulations and thank you for being a part. And Melissa, my dear friend Melissa, who I've known for years, uh, congratulations on, on everything you're doing and uh, your pivots and your passion and, and go-getter attitude. It's, it's really, truly inspirational. Thank you. Rita, congratulations. Thank you for being a part. And Shamila, thank you. you. Your sweetness, I think your sweetness really stood out for me. Uh, you made everything so great. So thank you so much for your uh, your participation. And Sarid, uh, congrats. You know, you, you inspired me to buy a bamboo toothbrush. So even becoming more eco-conscious. So fantastic. Good luck to you. Hope it all works out. And your digital nomad lifestyle. Fantastic stuff. And Steve, uh, congrats on your uh, efforts. Uh, I know COVID uh, hit you hard. Hopefully uh, you've, you've gained some skills here that are gonna you know, uh, take you forward and also with the support of Gelcor. Um, hopefully that all turns around for you. Um, thank you. Steve Cohen, uh, congratulations. Thank you for being a part of the class. And Susan Howell, what a, what a, what a pleasure it's been. Uh, you know, hopefully uh, someday we're gonna be able to meet up after this whole COVID thing. We're looking forward to a party at your place. Okay, I'm gonna hold you to that. Um, but also uh, congrats on your Friday um, webinars. I think they could be longer. You, there's no reason to leave them at 30 minutes. Whoever can't stay for the hour leaves, but you know, you could do an hour. I think that would give it more space. So I think that would be fantastic. And, uh, you know, thank you also for all the effort you put in. You really did put in a lot of effort. And I think uh, hopefully it shows in, in results. Suzanne Jewell, I mean, I've known you for years and I've seen you evolve and uh, 
congratulations on all you do and all the mindfulness you bring to uh, you know to the community, to South Florida, to the world. Keep doing what you're doing. It's uh, really truly a blessing, and it's uh, it's a blessing to know you. Todd Billings, congrats! You are so successful with your advertising. First of all, your video ads are beautiful. Uh, so congrats on the quality that you put into it. Uh, they made me hungry with your baked goods. <laughs> but also, um, congrats on the success of your advertising. I mean, you reached a limit where you could not produce enough because of the demand. So you had to cut the advertising down. So that's an incredible success. And that really shows that now it's time to ramp up on the business operation side, somehow expand or improve processes so that you can meet additional demand. I find this an incredible success story, so congrats. Veronica, uh, thank you for being a part, um, for, for all the effort you put in, for the presentation you made, and for your, um, you know, for your energy. So thank you for being a part of the class. Perfect. Thank you, Alex. And I wanted to give Neto Almanza, uh, an alumnus and one of our BizHack coaches, a chance to quickly um, say a few words before we go on to the BizHacker Award ceremony. Yes. And just before that, uh, Dan, I just wanted to point out that, uh, you know, what a pleasure it is to teach and to start to get to know each person individually and their business and their challenges and how they've grown in the five or six weeks and what they've done. I'm truly surprised myself as I was reading these names at how much I knew about what they had done and, and their, you know, their own businesses. So I think I find that uh, a real pleasure and, uh, you know, uh, nice collaboration. So thank you. Um, over to you, Neto. So I've been in four different cohorts, one as a student and three as a coach. And I got to say that if I have to describe this group in one word, it would be spirit. You guys have phenomenal spirit. You're all go-getters, very friendly, easygoing. And I want to congrat congratulate all of you for taking this course. You can always feel free to message me if you have any questions about video or video ads. I'm here to help. And so once again, congratulations. And it was an honor being a part of this very special and spirited cohort. <laughs> well said, Neto, and uh, thank you. So this is really kind of a highlight for me now of the ceremony. Um, it, this is essentially the valedictorian of the class. Um, but what makes this Biz Hacker Awards so special is it is 100% determined by the other participants in the class, voting on one of their uh, colleagues who best exemplify what we call Biz Hacker mentality. The biz hacker mentality is fearlessness in the face of fear, the willingness to embrace the new, to constantly experiment, to dare to fail gloriously. And we added this hashtag, never say die. Uh, our last semester's biz hacker award winner was someone who survived COVID and promised herself that she would build up her business if she were able to survive it. Uh, a mother of three, um, she survived and she's now building her business and her better life uh, as a result. Um, and it's two, um, extraordinary presenters, uh, one whose life was also touched as many of ours has been by COVID. Um, I wanna welcome Frederica Walker. Uh, Frederica Walker is a extraordinary talent and uh, I'm gonna do a quick introduction, Frederica, and then uh, I'm gonna uh, let you share your screen for your presentation uh, of your real life campaign. The other uh, uh, Biz Hacker Award winner, uh, we've had two because we had a tie, uh, is Susan Howell. Uh, Susan, you'll present right after Frederica. Um, Susan is an extraordinary uh, storyteller who combines the hard and the soft, as you're gonna hear very shortly. Frederica Walker, our Cohort 14 Biz Hacker Award winner, uh, is an extraordinary story of resilience um, in the face of tremendous challenges. Uh, Frederica had someone very close to her uh, in her church, the pastor, uh, come down with COVID and she had to take over pastoral duties uh, and community leadership and somehow managed uh, in the same five weeks uh, to put together an extraordinary case study uh, in digital marketing and resilience. It's with great pleasure I introduce BizHacker Award winner 
Frederica Walker. Awesome. Thank you, Dan and my mad hackers. This is such an honor this afternoon. Let me share my screen. Okay, can you all see it? Yep. Yes. Okay, okay, great. All right. Again, my name is Federica Walker, and I am honored to be here on this afternoon. The story of me. I received a divine revelation my senior year in college with instructions to change my major uh, to mass communication. I did and later landed myself an internship back home with the number one rated R&B and hip hop radio station in the Miami market, 99 Jams. I eventually got hired full time and worked in various departments from sales to programming and promotions. It was there that my intellect and love for all things marketing really took flight. My boss at the time would tell me that I had a special way of connecting with people, influencing and making things happen, and pushed me to start my own company. The idea was great, but what would I do and what would I call it? I reflected back to my childhood and the words that I would have printed on the back of my t-shirts, apple dumpling, which always drew a smile and conversation. The missing piece came from my college friend that reminded me that no matter what I was faced face with or whenever there was an issue, I always seemed to come up with a solution. In 2016, after 24 years of working in radio, I got laid off. I decided then to take the bull by the horn and move forward. My name is Federica Walker, and I am the CEO and creative solutionist for Apple Dumpling Solutions, marketing and consulting firm. My real life campaign. Hey girl, the Good Girlfriends Network. I, in joining BizHack, my goal was to focus on my marketing firm and to go through the process of making improvements and strengthening my digital knowledge. After the first week of class, my thoughts shifted and I decided to turn my attention to a brand, to my brand that I was launching under the umbrella of my marketing firm. Hey girl, the Good Girlfriends Network. So what is Hey Girl? Hey girl, is a subscription-based network for women to engage and interact with one another. Our vision is to connect with good girlfriends, women who are positive in nature, fun to be around, and inspired to explore life to its fullest with no apologies. Uh, the vision is to do monthly meetings, monthly meetups, girlfriend getaways, um, hey girl, um, the 2021, I'm sorry, 2021, um, conference and so much more. And, and then the pandemic hit. A soft launch of this event was actually done in 2019 and the response was great. My thought was to continue with events while I figured out uh, the dynamics of the actual platform. Uh, then I would draw in my good girlfriends. Uh, then COVID uh, changed that, so I had to pivot. My first coaching call with Ricardo was insightful. <clears throat> As I started um, sharing my concept of Hey Girl and I watched how uh, Ricardo's face lit up, I released the thought that I had to hold on to um, the thought of, of doing my platform and I released that thought and, and just decided to shift um, and consider moving to a diff on to a different direction and that was developing a Facebook group. We were able to walk through the customer journey and uh, what it would look like, and I was able to go back to the drawing board and put in some more work. Hey girl, the Good Girlfriends Network um, Facebook group. Now it was time to build. I was reflecting back um, on my instructor, Alex, our instructor, Alex's presentations on uh, consumer personas and segmentation. I then was able to take a look at myself and some of my good girlfriends, and I mapped out a worksheet of what and who they represented along with some other uh, pain points that they might have had or uh, I might have had. 
I was able to take um, and form those customers personas uh, by looking again at my good girlfriends, looking at who they, who they are, uh, where they were located, and some things that they like to do. And that insight, I was able to um, move forward with my target marketing research and my development um, in order for me to move forward with my campaign. Uh, here's a snapshot of the customer journey that I came up with, of course, running the Facebook ad, um, creating the lead magnet, of course, that would attract the attention of the good girlfriends, uh, automated email a response, of course, greeting them um, and welcoming them to the Facebook group, them having an opportunity to do a questionnaire uh, just before they were allowed into the group, um, and then, of course, answering, I'm sorry, a couple of questions, and then um, upon approval being entered into the group, they would be greeted with a welcome video, um, some other units to complete, and just an opportunity to get connected and encouraged through the process. And here is uh, the 15 second ad that I um, created. And this is uh, my uh, landing page that I also created for those individuals that were interested in connecting. I wanted to provide um, information on what the Good, Girl, uh, Good Girlfriends Network represented and um, just to show some excitement in inviting positive women, women into the movement. Um, of course, um, this was a great plan, a great thought. The course itself was amazing and then I got news, as uh, Dan mentioned uh, before, that my pastor had contracted COVID-19. And of course, in the role that I play, because I am a minister at my church and very involved in other aspects of our learning center and other projects that we had, I had to shift my focus and pretty much tend to uh, the needs of, of those things that were left on the table, um, as well as uh, tending to our uh, ministerial team as well as our congregation of those individuals that knew to press through as it relates to praying for our pastor. Uh, so my mindset have, had to shift. Um, I'm saying all of this because I was not able to run my ad. Uh, again, uh, my brain was scattered, of course, and what was going on, uh, but it was okay because I knew uh, my purpose of coming to uh, biz hack and I knew and I was determined to move forward regardless uh, to what was taking place. As I mentioned, I did not run my ad because again, during the two and a half, three weeks as I entered the class, this is when this happened, of course, with my pastor. Um, I can say that, you know, obviously there's great news. He was able to um, um, be released from the hospital and he's doing well, he's recouping. Uh, so prayer does work. So at the end of the day, my aha moment um, is that digital marketing is, is where it's at. Hey girl is really, will really come to life and spread its positive good girls, um, energy and movement, and I'm not going to stop until it, it, it takes place. What's next? The response from my classmates um, have been amazing, although I did not get to spend um, that much time collaborating and con uh, uh, conversating uh, with them. Uh, but the energy within itself was, was amazing and the push to go forward was intriguing to say the least. I have, um, even though I did not get to run my ad yet, have an opportunity to uh, collect some business leads and make some business connections here within the group. And I'm excited about that. Uh, what's going to happen moving forward? Of course, I'm going to gather the results uh, from my Facebook ad, which I, have, I am slated. I'm sorry, hold on. Sorry about that. Slated to run on uh, starting next week. I, of course, gather the results uh, from the Facebook ad. I will nurture and grow Hey Girl, the Good Girlfriends Network Facebook group. I will create offers and um, continue to build um, the group. And I want to take the group from free, of course, to a paid subscription once we get connected um, and we're able to move to that point. 
the very end, I want to follow the success of uh, my campaigns as well as what Good Girlfriends is going to do. And I want to spread that energy and connectivity as well as collaboration throughout uh, the community and with this brand. Again, my name is Frederica Johnson Walker. I am the creative solutionist of Apple Dumpling Solutions Marketing and Consulting Firm, and I'm excited about Hey Girl, the Good Girlfriends Network. <laughs> wow. Congratulations. I want to welcome Ricardo up, who is coaching you this semester, Ricardo. Yes. Patricia, wow, wow, congratulations. Uh, you, Thank you, you Ricardo. Did a fantastic job. Um, I've watched you grow, and I think you're on to something here. And, uh, you know, when we first met, I, I, I told you I'm in love with the apple dumpling. It's, it's such an interesting um, name. Uh, but the Hey Girl... I, I believe it's timely, and I, I think you are uh, you are the perfect person to do it oh, wow. um, because of your personality and your drive, and um, and so kudos to you. And I really really look forward to hearing a lot more um, uh, around around the success of this uh, of this platform. So congratulations! Thank you, thank you, thank you, Alex. Um, okay, so we'll move on. Um, so we're going to have one more BizHack Award presentation, uh, which I'm very excited to introduce. Let me share my screen. And uh, Susan, if you could get yourself ready, uh, we will uh, start with you in one second. Susan Howe, our BizHacker Award winner, uh, is an extraordinary case study uh, in messaging and the power of story and brand. She is someone who worked uh, as a federal investigator who now is, uh, through her own personal life experience, become a coach for people on how to manage their finances and their money. And she's able to combine the, the hardness that comes with being an investigator <laughs> with the softness uh, of the best coaches. Uh, it's with incredible pleasure that I welcome Susan Howell, I wanna make one point uh, before uh, she presents, which is um, Facebook algorithms recommend short videos, 12 seconds when you run an ad. Susan ignored that guidance and she went and put together a one minute video that had extraordinary response from her audience. And it's a beautiful case study uh, exhibiting something that Pablo Picasso says, which is you wanna learn how to paint like an artist uh, so you can, you want to learn the rules like an artist so you can break them. Um, oh boy, <laughs> I messed this one up. Um, you want to learn the rules like a painter so you can break them like an artist. Um, I'm going to take this one from the top because that was, uh, I, I mucked that up. Susan Howe is our BizHacker Award winner and is an extraordinary case study in the power of not necessarily listening to the rules and following your gut when you're marketing. She, uh, the guidance generally from Facebook is that you wanna keep your videos to about 12 seconds. But Susan recognized that her audience needed to hear more from her than she could say in 12 seconds. And her video had extraordinary results. And it's one thing to know what the rules are in marketing and it's another one to be able to use your gut and your instinct and to respond to what your audience needs. Uh, it's with incredible pleasure that I welcome Susan Howell uh, to the stage, the money maestra, Susan. Susan, you're on mute. I'm mute. And you were sharing and now you're not. Okay. Can you see my, my, uh, no, we, you were sharing, but now you're not. Huh. You. That's strange. Uh, on mine, I'm sharing. Hmm. Okay. Thank you. 
letting me share. Can you see that? No. Now we can. Now you can, yeah. right? Okay. Let me just. My name is Susan Howell, and I'm the Money Maestra. I created Money Maestra to take the stress and fear out of money and put back in the freedom and fun. I believe you should be able to choose your life. Hmm. What I learned, this is where I grew up. This is the front porch of where I grew up. What I learned there if it's, is if I didn't figure out money, I would be trapped. Just click. Money meant freedom to me. I also learned that I had to spend time in nature and I had to, I befriended the animals that lived across the street from me, the squirrels, and uh, learned to just be by myself and think about what I wanted in life. I also was the first person to graduate from college in my family. And then I went on to work for the federal government, first on the civil side with IRS and then as a special agent with IRS and the Department of Justice Inspector General. And I also began investing at a very young age. Because of my financial habits and strategy, I was able to retire at 50. I created Money Maestra because I know that financial responsibility equals financial freedom, but I did not see this readily being taught in homes, schools, or society. I want to transform the, the way people relate to money. But first I needed to get the word out. So I joined BizHack and the Digital Marketers Edge because we're all mad here. For my uh, case study, I, I focused on a class that I just finished teaching last Saturday called Women, Money, and Relationships. It was a three-part series. It was the first time I was going to be teaching this. So this is where I broke the rules. I, instead of a 15 or 12 or 15 second ad, I did a 59 second ad and I'm gonna play it for you because it had incredible results. Hi, my name is Susan Howell and I'm the Money Maestra. I'm here to help you learn how to budget like a boss, how to take the stress and fear out of money, and put back in the freedom and the fun to learn about the joy of money. This summer, Money Maestro is offering a very special three-part series titled Women, Money, and Relationships. Money affects all of our relationships, starting with the relationship with ourselves. So learn to unpack your money story. My money story started when I was a young girl. On Friday evenings, my father would come home from work, open up his wallet, peel off bills to my mother when she didn't work or drive and tell her to make it last for the week. That was after he had already stopped at the package store and the local bar on his way home. I vowed that would never be me. And I was able to change my money story and change my life. So ladies, join us this summer for women, money, and relationships. Let's talk about money. I'm Susan Howell, the Money Maestra. So that was my ad. And then, ooh, sorry. Hi, my name ooh, is Susan sorry. Howell. And I little, little glitch. But then my next ad, which was somewhat similar, was my lead generation ad, and it absolutely tanked. And um, I put in the same audience, and I really couldn't figure out what happened. But it was getting close to the start of my class, and I needed to get enrollment up, so I pivoted. I decided to go back to my organic approach of MailChimp, my MailChimp email campaign, texting and Facebook messaging, Facebook and Instagram posts, and good old fashioned word of mouth. I told everyone I knew about the class and said, it's gonna be really good, you wanna take the class. So the results were good. I had 14 women in the class. I created a private Money Maestro Wise Women Facebook group for everyone in the class. And there is an interest in extending the class. The women in the class got so much out of it that they want me to continue the class and extend it. And I generated lots of feedback in the class, which is helping me grow as a business and as a person. And I felt that this class really, Money Maestra is starting to make a positive difference in the world of money and in relationships. And for me, I can feel my dreams unlocking. My big ahas were, I didn't know how much I did not know about digital marketing until I took this class. The importance of video ads. Before this class, I was doing still ads. I was not doing video ads. 
And for me, soft and strong works. I'm strong. I was a federal agent. I broke down doors, but I'm also very soft. And it's the combination of both that make me authentically me. And it works for my brand. And a bit of the veil of digital marketing has been removed. And I want to give a big thank you to BizHack. And where do I go next? My women, money, and relationships will be on a calendar schedule. I'm creating a money maestra paid subscription money tribe. I'm continuing to expand the reach of my bespoke budgeting, the budget like a boss program. I'm offering a menu of various financial topics for online classes, lunch and learns, speaking engagements, and traveling to teach and present once COVID is over. And I also wanna end with a very special announcement of a collaboration with my cohort in this class, my, my startup coach, and my dear friend, Suzanne Jewell, we are collaborating and bringing you Susie Squared. And our first workshop is the Mindful Money Negotiation Workshop. I'm turning it over to Suzanne to explain further. I'm super honored that I'm watching you and I'm hardly able to talk because you are, you are building a new life like a boss. And it's just an honor to watch you shine um, Susan and I are going to combine mindfulness and how to act from speaking up and speaking out so that you can get what you ask for, because there are a lot of women who are very challenged by that. And I could not be more honored to say that combining our boldness with our business expertise with our brains makes everyone who joins soft and strong and come join us. And if you want to get a 15% off uh, BizHack15, please join us. We would love to have you there. Fabulous. Neto. I just want to say that um, when we first started, Dan asked me who I thought had the potential to be a superstar. And the first name that came to my mind was Susan. I immediately spoke wonderful things. And even when we had our first coaching session, I was telling you how you got what it takes to be a public figure. And uh, you're based on the statistics, I was blown away that your one minute horizontal video ad had so much engagement. Uh, it was surprising because I was so insistent to be square video in 15 seconds, yet you did the opposite and was still very successful. Uh, I'm very proud that you are one of the superstars of this group. You got what it takes and you are you have so much potential. Congratulations on the Suzy Square. I think that's phenomenal, very creative. And both of you have very, I said the word spirit that reflected the group, but I think both of your spirits combined are great chemistry that will attract a lot of people that you can help along the way. So I'm very proud of you, Suzanne, and uh, congratulations. Thank you, Nido. So I wanted to, um, you know, my internet fell off, so I'm, I'm back. I wanted to acknowledge both BizHack Award winners uh, Federica, I acknowledge all the work you put in and all the challenge that you uh, went through and, and the faith that saw you through. Uh, it's really uh, truly inspiring. Um, you know, your work on the personas, on the customer journey, the lead form, your visuals, your creativity. Um, there's so much passion behind what you do. Uh, hey girl, you rock. Uh, thank you. That was awesome. Um, Susan, um, Really, I think uh, what a wonderful um, revelation you had to that you are the brand and to do that personal video where you show up, uh, you show up to others in that video and that allows people to see who you are and who they would be working with. It is so important. The video really uh, is the dominant medium uh, in today's advertising and you really uh, took that leap which is a challenge for most people and you did it and you saw great results. Uh, I would say going forward, study how other people are doing it, see what techniques they're doing, see how they do it. Look at also story videos and stories like Instagram stories, uh, messenger stories and how people show up in those videos. Uh, I think you learn some things from what they're doing. Um, you know, they say uh, learn the rules like a pro so you can break them like an artist. And that's, uh, that's what you've done here. Um, I would say your, so your big challenges, I think, are also in uh, SEO 
really, which is meaning about the content and how you do that content, I think is important. And also social media and connecting to others and bringing them back to your site. I think with your women's group, you can get reviews for what you're doing. And I think reviews will be important uh, for you. It's also an SEO thing. And also the collaboration with Suzanne makes entire sense. Money is energy, you know, and once you understand money is energy, uh, you tap into the abundance that exists in the universe and money is abundant. And if you get into that mindset, and I think that's why it makes so much uh, sense to be mindful about money. So congratulations. And thank you. Perfect. Thank you, everyone. Um, I'm going to share my screen for a couple quick announcements and then uh, a little last raffle and the musical surprise. Thank you guys for sticking with us. This has been just uh, moving and inspirational. So um, I wanted to announce that applications are now open uh, for cohort 15, which starts next month uh, on September 14th. Uh, if you know of anyone who you think could benefit please have them apply at apply.bizhack.com. This is an application only course. We really cultivate uh, the best entrepreneurs, business owners and marketers uh, to create the group that you guys have experienced. And we want your references and your referrals. Um, that really helps us build the best class possible. Uh, I wanna remind you that we are offering scholarships to minority owned business owners and women owned businesses as well as females and professionals of color. Uh, you can get to that by try.bizhack.com. These are the key links. Uh, I also put them in the chat. Please spread the word uh, and give this experience to other people. Uh, it's the gift, give the gift of BizHack. Um, we're gonna be having a scholarship information session this Friday at noon. Uh, it's at bizhack73.eventbrite.com. All of this information is gonna be in a follow-up email that you're gonna be getting uh, after graduation. Uh, so uh, keep an eye out for that. Um, this is the BizHack Live Wednesday webinar series and we have some amazing webinars coming up so you can continue your learning journey. Um, most of the sessions are free and open to the community. Next week, we're gonna have Richard Shapiro, who's the president of the Center for Client Retention, talking about five tips to get your customers back. Incredibly relevant uh, in the time of COVID. Um, in September, we're gonna have uh, two amazing sessions, one led by our own Yoel Gutierrez, newly minted lead instructor on Google My Business. And then after that, uh, TikTok and TikTok advertising. TikTok's been in the news uh, in September. They're being threatened to be banned in the United States by the current president. We will see, uh, but uh, for now, uh, the session is on. Uh, we're gonna do a small business guide to marketing on TikTok. J TikTok, they just added an advertising platform similar to um, Facebook's last month. So it's really brand new that you're starting to see ads uh, in TikTok. And I've noticed that in my own, um, uh, browsing on TikTok. Uh, we have three more, uh, a couple more thank you gifts to give away and uh, Lilia will announce the winners. The first is from Illustrated Properties, Leslie Savin, a complimentary real estate consultation. And the winner is? Susan Windmiller. Congratulations, Susan. We also have $14 off of any order at the Sweet Rustic Bake Shop, which can take you pretty far. And the winner is? Christine Wing. Perfect. And then finally, 10% off the Budget Like a Boss program that Susan just presented. The winner is Other Heiss. Sorry, Other Heiss. Congratulations, Other. It's good to see you on here. So now I want to um, uh, hand it over uh, to Ricardo Barris. Uh, believe it or not, Ricardo has written a song dedicated to the biz hackers. Uh, Ricardo, if you want to say a few words and then we'll play the song. Well, yeah, thanks, Dan. Um, well, uh, thanks again, um, everyone. Uh, you've done a phenomenal job in choosing to take this uh, program and I hope you will go out and share it. You are now evangelist, essentially. And so um, we hope that you've been convicted that you can now spread the word of uh, BizHack and the good news of BizHack and the transformation it has done 
um, in your in your life and your businesses. Uh, the song uh, I I so as a composer I I often write a song and it's a surprise to a lot of folks who are not essentially um, a part of my personal community that I I, I do I'm a recording artist and I I do write uh, music and um, my psychic name on iTunes and anywhere there's music is Ricky Anthony so you might Google that and find me there <clears throat> um, but um. This song that I, I penned was over the last uh, cohort, 13, I witnessed the triumphant endurement of the five-week program of, of several businesses, um, some of which, some of the owners who actually contracted uh, COVID uh, essentially during that period uh, as well and fought throughout the entire program and graduate um, and also made uh, top presenters. And it was, it was, it was really amazing uh, for me to sort of witness that. And so um, I, penned a, uh, I, I penned a few lyrics and I put it together and I said, you know, I, I really want to dedicate this to, to anyone who endures uh, to the end, even if it's for five weeks, regardless of, uh, you know, how, how difficult it might've been. So, the song is titled Hats Off to You. Uh, it's still in draft mode, essentially, um, and we'll be releasing it soon. But uh, think about the words, um, not the artists, uh, but I, I'd like for you to focus on the words. And it's really our hats, uh, you know, we lift our hats off to you, and my hat is off to all of you uh, for doing everything you needed to get this uh, finish line, uh, to cross this finish line. I'm really proud. I'm really proud of uh, your achievement. Line and knowing that you did it somehow. While on the journey, there were many things you didn't know how. It's because of your openness you learn. Look what you've earned. Yeah. And as you go wrong, planning those seeds of all the lessons learned to reap what you sow. Now being afraid to tell and share to everyone you know With complete openness to learn They too can earn I lift my hands off to you And you, and you For doing all the things you need to do Instead of giving up Oh, for through and through, you should be too. Hats off to you. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, you doing all the things you need to do. Instead of giving up. Oh, for through and through, you should be too. Hats off to you, you should be too. Hats off to you. Oh, 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 Beautiful. Yay. All right. Well, that's it for this chapter of our time together. Um, thank you to Alex, Ricardo, Neto, Yoel, and Cheryl for your dedication. Thank you, of course, to Lilia. Everybody give a quick shout out to Lilia for making this go so beautifully and so smoothly and dealing with all my last minute shenanigans. 
thank you for that. Um, and thanks to all of you, the Mad Hackers. Uh, let's stay in touch. Let's keep working together and let's grow and grasp the opportunity uh, from the midst of this crisis. Um, I'm gonna sign off now and uh, we will see you guys all in another class at our BizHack Live webinars uh, and in our alumni community. Thanks everybody. Woo! Woo Did it! Congratulations, everyone. Thank Bye, you. Everybody. Congratulations. Ciao, ciao. <laughs> ciao. Congratulations. Ciao. Good.